60% of attempted uh, cross-border um, uh, buys uh, on internet it fails because of different things, uh, technology, regulation, uh, financial uh, hurdles, or whatever. It's essential that the Commission comes up with proposals that take into account what is really needed and does not settle for less ambitious results. So I will be looking forward to the proposals of the Commission to indeed show that ambition. So we're on the verge of a digital explosion. And actually, I think the digital explosion has, has started. And if we manage this positively across Europe, I think it can be positive for businesses, it can be positive for consumers, and it all can, also can be positive for Europe. We know that only 8% of the SMEs in Europe trade cross-border. 8%. That's, that's um, I would say, from a competitive point of view, it's a disaster is vastly damaging to the image and the perception of the European Union if particularly the young generations um, who are so much uh, more active uh, online uh, discover that uh, such a high percentage of cross-border online transactions cannot be completed. You cannot have rules for companies that are incorporated in Europe and different rules for companies that are not incorporated in Europe if they're both serving products to European consumers. So that's really important, a level playing field. Now, this takes creativity, and it's not all clear yet, but my sense is that controllers, that's the jargon for responsible organisations, need to demonstrate that they have used uh, the best available techniques where well, this is appropriate. E-government, e-health, areas like this would certainly qualify. We have a triple crisis. We have, it's the financial crisis, the jobs crisis, and the climate crisis. That's where we stand. And we also know that our competitors worldwide are uh, tough ones. We know that China is investing. We know that US is investing uh, immensely in uh, these areas. I would like to reinforce the responsibility of online actors and I want to enhance their accountability. There is also some scope for simplification there but we need to create incentives that the players are doing the right thing. The way we've worked uh, when it comes to in the finance market, telecoms market, electricity market, uh, I think we have to find uh, the same kind of theoretically constructing the, the regulation. I would like also to uh, underline how important, in my view, the digital single market is going to be as a hidden but powerful uh, friendly instrument for the achievement of many other objectives of EU and member states policies. The mobile internet and therefore data privacy is a massive part of our business going forward. Today, just in Europe, we have over 10 million customers actively accessing the internet via their mobile phone. 10 million people today accessing the internet. A crucial aspect is mobility of factors of production. Labour in the first place. There are many obstacles to free movement of labour and even to the willingness to exercise the right to free movement of labour. I don't think there is a one single thing for the digital market. If I would say, just to be forced to mention one thing, I would say leadership. The right to be forgotten is, is helpful in specific contexts and in a general way we simply need to push back the presumption that everything will always be remembered because then our society is an unhealthy place. From a European perspective, we need to be very careful that we don't get left behind. Keep uh, the key responsibilities uh, for this um, dossier in the very determined and persistent uh, and concrete uh, four hands uh, of two ladies, Nelly Cruz and Vivian Reding. <laughs>